So I want to read you a story of, of Jesus healing somebody. You know, Jesus' ministry was, I mean, loosely, one-third of the time spent preaching about the gospel of the kingdom. Now, you know, we talked around, around here about he preached a little. He had, there's just a few scriptures on him talking about the gospel of salvation, but really a lot more scriptures talking about the gospel of the kingdom because salvation is the door to the kingdom. And the kingdom is where all this is made available to us, okay? And so we see so many different instances. About a third of the time, Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom. About a third of the time, he was casting out devils. And about a third of the time, he was healing people and doing miracles, all right? And so I want to read you one of the miracles he did in John chapter 5. And this is the story of the man, the crippled man that was healed at the pool of Bethesda. It says in John 5, now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. Bethesda means house of mercy or house of grace. Because we're, he we're saved by grace, we're healed by grace, we're prospered by grace. Everything we do is because we receive the grace of God. It says, in these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. So here it was called house of grace, and yet it was filled with sick people. Desperate people. People that were invalids. People that had no ability to do for themselves. And it was filled with these people, for there were, they said an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time. How many feel like you've dealt with some things a long time? He said to him, do you want to be made well? Jesus, like, hey, do you want to get healed? And listen, now the man responds. And the sick man answered him. Now, it actually says that he was, he, that he had this infirmity 38 years, and, and, and the Bible even calls him the sick man. The sick man answered him and said, sir, I have no man to put me in the pool when the water stirred up. But while I'm coming, another steps down before me. See, what was the first thing he did? He started giving excuses. Started trying to approach it through reasoning. Started telling Jesus all the reasons why he probably wasn't a candidate to be healed. You know, I'll tell you how this, I'll tell you how this zings me sometimes. When I've been out traveling a lot and I get tired and my body gets run down and then I get sick. You know what happens? In my head, it's, this, is, this is the response. Oh, well, I'm sick because I've run my body down. And I start making an excuse of why I can't be made whole. How many know that we can very easily start making excuses that keeps God from really moving in our life? But Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed, and walk. Jesus made a decree. He didn't pray for him. He didn't lay hands on him. Those are good things to do. But Jesus made a decree. As a matter of fact, you're not going to find pretty much any place in Scripture where you find Jesus laying hands on somebody and praying for them to be healed. He just made decrees. Rise, take up your bed and walk. Stretch out your hand. Be made whole. Woman, thou art loose. Come on. Jesus made decrees that released the, the faith of God and the healing power of God, and immediately they were made whole. And so one of the things that I want to look at is that sometimes in order to enter into healing, especially if you've been in a condition a long time, is that we've got to confront some things. Let's go to the next slide. We've got to confront the excuses. We've got to confront our someday mentality. You know what that is? Someday I'll be healed. Someday I'll be blessed. Someday... I'll get married. Someday, 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 someday. And if you're living in someday, you're not living in today. Scripture says now faith is. So we got to pull it out of someday into today and not say someday I'm going to be healed. Start declaring today I'm going to be healed. As a matter of fact, I'm already healed. I'm just laying hold of that healing so that I can begin to walk in it. Get out of the someday mentality. 
See, we got to get out of hopelessness. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12 in um, King James talks about hope deferred. I like the way it says it in the Message Bible. It says this, unrelenting disappointment can make your heart sick, but a sudden good break turns your life around. Come on, we got to shift out of hopelessness. That's that limitation. That's that place of, uh, of having been prayed for, having believed God for some kind of a miracle for a long time and not seeing it manifest. We got to, by an act of our will, we got to shift out of hopelessness and into a place of faith because faith produ uh, hope produces faith and faith produces the supernatural. And then we've got to deal with unbelief. Unbelief. When Jesus was um, going to go heal um, a child that was afflicted, uh, Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Come on, how many of you have ever been in that place? God, I believe, but help my unbelief. Listen, the song that we were singing about, I'm going to sing in the middle of a storm. I have a dear friend, um, Pastor Denise Goulet. She and her husband lead the church in International Church of Las Vegas that I, that I go to every year. And she had uh, excruciating back pain. And she said, rather than groaning with the pain, every time she wanted to groan, instead she lifted her hands and she started to praise. And she started to thank the Lord. And she started to be grateful to God. And she started to extol all the things about God and all the ways that he had blessed her. And guess what? By the end of the day, there was no more pain. Do y'all hear what I said? She positioned herself with praise, and that unlocked her place of belief, and then God released a miracle to her. We've got to confront our issues of unbelief. Now, I ministered to this lady um, at uh, a conference with Mahesh Shabda. This was probably, I want to say maybe, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. And I just want to just say this. Sometimes we don't seem to feel like we've got the faith. That's why we have times of prayer. Because sometimes the person that prays for you may even have more faith than you do. <laughs> That's why we need each other. Okay? And I'm going to come down here to tell this story. I was at Mahesh Shavda's, and I had um, been ministering a long time, and I was getting ready to close the service. And the Lord said, before you finish tonight, I want you to pray for Marie because Marie needs healing in her back. Gave me a specific name. Now, there was probably 800 to 1,000 people there. What are the odds that there's going to be somebody there named Marie? Quite a bit, okay? So I just said, God says that he wants to heal Marie of a back problem. I thought that the Marie's were going to come out of the wall, okay? There were so many Marie's with back problems that started coming down. Probably literally about 20 people started coming down for prayer whose names were Marie that had back problems. But the last person I saw coming up here, now that we've got a whole line of people lined up up here, I saw a lady coming down, an, old, an elderly lady. She was on a walker, and she had both her sons helping her walk up the aisle. And I heard the Lord say, that's Marie. And I thought in my head, of course it is. <laughs> the worst off one in the house, okay? <laughs> of course that's Marie, okay? So I went down and I prayed over everybody else. We saw some amazing healing, saw people get released in their back. You know, one of the things that I have people do is I, I, I have them bend over to say how far can they bend, and then I pray for them, and then we have them bend over again, and they usually have. And then I was at home the other day, and I thought, I wonder how far I can bend over, and there's nothing wrong with my back, okay? So I don't know. All right. Just saying. Okay, so... I went down the line and I prayed for all these people and then Marie was right at the end and her sons were standing there and she was shaking because I'd left her to the end and she was very weak. And I, and I said, and I, and I knew God said he wanted to heal her. So I, so I, I but I, was, I suddenly was just overwhelmed with compassion. You know, it says that when Jesus saw the multitudes, he had compassion on them. And when you see that, it says, and he healed them all. Amen. I was overwhelmed with compassion for this woman who was obviously living in pain, who was obviously immobilized by this pain. 
And I just wrapped my arms around her. I asked if we could move her walker. And she said, oh, I, she said, oh, I can't stand without my walker. And I said to her sons, I said, can you guys just hold her? And they said, yes. And so they moved her walker and they were holding her up. And I just put my arms around her. And I said, now, Marie, you're going to stand up. And she said, as long as my sons are holding me, I can stand up. And I said, you're going to stand up. And she said, but I can't stand. And I said, okay, but you're going to stand. And so I did like this to the sons. Like, I had my arms around her, and I was like, you guys. And so pretty soon, I felt her stand up. I had my arms around her, and I felt her stand up. I didn't let go of her until I felt her stand up. But I felt her stand up. And then I stepped back, and I said, Marie, you're standing all by yourself. And you know what she said to me? But I can't stand all by myself. I said, but you are standing all by yourself. She says, no, but I can't. And I said, tell you what, take a step with me. She said, oh, no, I, I, there's no way I can walk by myself. And I just said, come on, just step with me. And I stepped back, and when I stepped back, she stepped up. So I stepped back again, and I said, look, Marie, you're walking. Look at this. I have got her by the hand, and I said, look, Marie, you're walking. And she says, no, I can't walk. I can't walk. And I said, no, but you are walking. Look, look what you're doing. You're walking. And she's looking around. And she's going, but I can't do this. And her sons are standing there going. And I'm like. And I said, Marie, the Lord says he wants to dance with you. And she started, she started laughing. She said, I used to love to dance, but I can't dance. And I said, watch. And I just began to spin her around. And pretty soon this woman is spinning across the bone. She, the whole time she's going, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. But I want you to know, she stood. She walked. She danced. She jumped. She cried. She rejoiced because God broke the limit off of her. She was so limited in her mind that she did not believe she could receive. So from both sides of that equation, let me just say, there are times that we have to understand that maybe our faith is, is, is running low. That's why we need each other.